little over half of that and see most of those aircraft on this uh, park right on that Galicia soil. That's the administrative headquarters for the whole operation. 600 men and women work here. They all have uh, clearances, they all have personnel aircraft down through there. Uh, three Crusaders and two aircraft down here on the grounds. That's a, uh, a, a testing area for different manufacturers that make the C models and the D models. Don't see any of those out there right now. It's a single seat, single engine aircraft. The way we tell them apart, uh, the second one right there has a little long, has a longer, a yeah, long big C-130, the Hercules, built by Lockheed. Lockheed built 2,700 of those over the years. In fact, they're still building them. The first row here, five or six of them are from the Royal Norwegian Air Force. Lockheed, you can always tell a Lockheed airplane by the shape of the the tail, if you look at it from the side, it sort of looks like a haystack. Okay, this is what we call Celebrity Row, folks. As I said last time I was through here, there's 63 aircraft on both sides. We've got a, a, a carrier out there at sea is worth about $5 billion with uh, six airplanes that's uh, in what they call inviolate storage out here. It's not going to fly again, but uh, it's probably going to end up in a museum somewhere. Else. How are we doing? Put anybody to sleep yet? Beef up the, hydro, the uh, fire control equipment on the inside. Uh, Air Force is slowly transitioning to the 737. The Air Force called there the Nightingale. He's an entirely different mission. There's our P-2 Neptune in the front of the fuselage area. And uh, the F-14 Tomcat, uh, we talked about that aircraft earlier. First of the line, uh, air superior, superiority, air swing wing variable geometry aircraft. wing those wings are straight out for slow flight for landing high speed almost twice the speed of sound back on your right side here's our great b52 now this is a g model it's the one prior to the h models out there if you look up underneath the wing you'll see that attachment point between the engines and the fuselage that airplane doing Mach 2 it's the sr to do then you put that on there Mach 3 that's a fast throw well the third one didn't get a review now so there's your t-37s uh, there's too many there now, probably a hundred or more. There's your S, uh, uh, S3s, your Vikings. All of those are retired now. Airs are up in the tires. I can, uh, uh, there's a fellow back there that moves that boom up and down, left and right for the receiving aircraft. Helicopters on your left side. The rotor don't, the uh, rotors are all removed. That's for uh, uh, the desert air out here that just destroys rotor blades if they need it. The right side over there is a long shed, 900 feet long, they tell us. No doors. Bulkheads, windows, nothing in there. Don't need that out here in the desert air. They build it especially that way so they can move just the largest and heaviest free world transport aircraft for many, many years. About 840,000 pounds gross lift off. They're in different parts only. Yeah, many of them uh, were brought in from the East Coast out of Norfolk area and retired by the Navy. And that's where they're destroyed, those if they can. And then eventually uh, the, old, the whole aircraft will be a scrap. On your right side down through there, been here for a long time. Just now getting around to taking them apart. Or, uh, F4 Phantoms, notice the landing gear is missing out of your uh, uh, C5s down there coming apart. You can see all the parts already taken off. A lot of them on the vertical stable back is gone. Uh, most of the engines are gone, already used uh, on other, other aircraft still flying. F-4 Phantoms, uh, there's some F-A-18s right there, early generation, landing gear is gone, not much left of those aircraft. Here's our F-111s, we alluded to those earlier, the U.S. doesn't fly those anymore, but the Australians did. Very slowly taking those apart carefully, they tell us the transmission, those H-46, uh, each one of those worth about a million dollars each. They very carefully take those out. Well, number one is we as taxpayers pay for it. We might as well have it. Number two is should we ever have, God forbid, have to go into production again on those airplanes, we've got a good head start by having that equipment available. It comes off of the tails. A lot of equipment in that tail section there that can be used, uh, bell cranks and cables and antennas and so forth. There's your uh, first row there is your uh, heavy lift helicopters, your H-53s. There's some more uh, S-3 in other countries. The, the Peruvian Air Force, we've been told, are buying those uh, F-16s that you see there on the stanchions. That's the way they take them apart. Wings on. F-111s on your right side over there. You notice the wings are missing on a lot of those. That airplane is well over 40 years old. Real must be a real hydraulic nightmare. They keep those aircraft airborne by the, uh, with the Australians, so a lot of those wings have probably been shipped, been removed and shipped off to, to the Australians.